So with the weather improving and the sun coming up, that means one thing, shallow fishing. These big fish like to be on the top layers, cruising around, and that means one thing, catching them shallow. So what we're gonna do now is show you how to do some shallow fishing and get the best results. So when it comes to bait choice, it's pretty simple. It's just basically pellets, pellets, and more pellets. So size wise, I tend to stick with four and six mil for shallow fishing. Now, ideally, I like to get away with four mils a can. It means I can fish a bit more aggressively, feed more bait, and hopefully get more fish in my swim. Now, when it comes to six mil pellets, this is when I've got some more nuisance fish in my peg. So like little skimmers, roach, and fish that are necessarily going to eat four mil pellets, and I can't really get rid of them. So if I'm getting these problems with little fish, it's six mil pellets. So it's basically two choices of bait, four mil pellets, rafting them in, feeding plenty if I can, if I haven't got that situation, it's six mil pellets, light and often, and keep slapping and turning the rig and hope to catch these carp. And these are basically just some six and eight mil low oil pellets. So they're really light in colour. They basically sink a bit slow, which is obviously great for catching these wary carp. And it just sinks that little bit slow in the pellets you feed in. It normally catches them wary fish out. Other baits we've also got for the hook baits. We've just got some simple six mil pellets or four mil pellets like we're fishing. You know, you can try also them. We've also got some eight mil type, copping type pellets and we've got some red pellets. Now, again, sometimes if you've got some silver fish or you need a bit more of a plop, try an eight mil and just keep bringing them changes to get you them little runs of fish. Now, noise is basically the most important thing with shallow fishing. So if they're a bit wary, spooky, or they're actually in your bait, sometimes a six mil can be better, whereas if they're sort of you're picking them off and they're coming to the noise then an eight mil so it's all about variation and just going around your hook baits and trying to find the best thing on the day so when shallow fishing noise is ever so important now obviously when you're feeding your pellets it's already going to make some noise but actually singling singling your hook bait out is really important so Obviously, if you've got a group of carp in your feed, you want them to try and find your hook bait first. So ideally, there's two scenarios. It's either make a less of a noise or a big noise. So by this, I mean either put a big pellet on, give it a slap, make a lot of noise, or maybe put a six mil on, like a slightly sort of silenter noise. And sometimes this doesn't spook them, whereas being a big splash can spook them. But then again, it can be vice versa. So it's all about playing it around it on the day. Now, when it also comes to shallow fishing, either flicking your rig past at the back of your feed with a big pellet can be brilliant or maybe even slapping in your bait so again this is all where it comes to trial and error so on dead days where the fish are a bit sort of spooky or a bit wary then flicking your rig past the actual feed and fishing on a long line can be absolutely devastating whereas on some days they want to be in the feed and you've got to pick them fish out and make the noise and that's where slapping comes into its own so just think about your noises and play with it on the day and hopefully you'll find the best results Again, talking about noise, choosing the correct pole float is ever so important. Now, you've basically got, again, two scenarios when it comes to float choice. You can either fish a decent sized float, which is obviously going to make a bit of noise and hopefully bring them carp in. But on them days with a bit wary and spooky, actually by fishing a little float, which makes sort of a, a silent to splash, that can just wear, again, sort of catch them wary carp out. So by having both situations, so say like a 4x10 and a 4x14 dibber, you can have two different types of effects there, which one will make obviously more noise and one will be silent. So I have a few rigs set up with you. Again, just keep trying them and then you'll find what's best on the day. Getting your rigs right is so important. Now, gone are the days with little short lines, maybe six inches of line and fishing a foot deep and waiting for the fish to hook themselves. The carp have simply seen all that all before now and they get very spooked from it. So it's all about nowadays, a lot of the time, are fishing a good length of line between your pole tip and your float. So in a lot of scenarios nowadays, I'm talking two or three foot, and this just keeps the line and the pole tip away from the fish so, it doesn't spook, so they don't spook. Now, when it comes to choosing your shotting pattern and your rigs as well, it's really important, again, to play around with this. I can't stress when shallow fishing, you can't just sit on the same thing. You've got to be active and work out what's best on the day. So a lot of time, when I'm fishing just for carp, I simply, anything up to about 18 inches deep, I just have a little bulk of number 10s under the float, and that just cocks the float 
and your hook bait naturally comes down behind it, which again looks dead natural to the carp and uh, they don't get suspicious of it. When I'm sort of fishing any deeper in this, I tend to sort of change my float patterns. So in this case today, I basically got six foot of water out there. So what I'm, in, my, in my mind, I tend to sort of go half depth and then I'll go quarter depth. So my half depth rig is actually about three foot deep, but we need a different float for this. So we've just got a 4B10 Fiore. Now, the beauty with this float is it just takes one number 10, but when I slap this float, that, that float's just gonna cock with the pellet. So I can read the pellet going all the way down, meaning I can see what's going on in my peg. So if I'm missing bites or anything like that, it tells me I need to go shallower, or maybe pick the other rig up. But if I'm not getting bites, it means go deeper. So by having them two rigs, I'm gonna hopefully find what level them fish are at. But another thing as well, say if you are missing bites, don't, don't be scared to just, again, play with that shotting pattern. So maybe move it near your hook link so it just registered a bit faster. But this is not necessarily something that happens all the time, but if it was to happen, just change the shotting pattern, put it near the bulk, so obviously it registers quicker, you might hit more bites. So getting your rigs right for shallow fish is ever so important. Remember, decent line between your pole tip and your float, not too short, and you won't go too wrong for carp. So I've just mentioned the rigs there. Now, one thing I must stress is the importance of balance and strong tackle. So it's no good fishing like 013 and sort of being hooking them and being scared they're going to come off or break your, these are carp and you seriously got to step up your gear for them because they're not line shy. And all you'll do by fishing light, you won't gain any advantage and you'll just lose fish. So main line on my rigs, it's dead simple. I use 022 main line, nice, strong and drawable. It's not going to let you down. And hook wise, hook length wise, I use anything either 019 on a good day when they're not pulling too hard, or if they're being really hard and fighting hard, I'll step up to 022, simple as that. Hook wise, dead simple, I just use, stick to a sort of a 16 SMWG when I'm fishing on 019, 022 lines. Nice strong hook, never lets me down. Keep me nice, my kit nice and simple, and it does the job. So to balance that tackle, elastic choice again comes into it. For my, sort of my cart fishing, a lot of the time, stick to this green zip elastic, nice and soft on the strike, stretches for miles, and it's very rare to get broke. So keep your, keep your tackle simple, and you won't go far wrong with that. So the one downside to shallow fishing is you actually got to fish a decent distance on your pole. So ideally, anything over 30 metres is going to be the right distance. Now, the reason for this is simply carp don't like to tend to come in too close because they feel sort of a bit spooky and not happy. So ideally, the longer the better, really. So anything between 14 and 16 metres is really the ideal ideal length that's where the fish feel confident and that's where they'll settle so that is one downside to fishing but with a good pole it doesn't make it too bad the busiest anglers are always the best shallow anglers now the reason for this is they're constantly working the rig and feeding which is, is, means one thing it brings more fish into your peg all the time now when it actually comes to feeding how often you sort of feed is dead important so Really, you want to be keeping a nice rhythm. So say every 10 seconds, something like that, little and often. So hopefully then fish come into your peg, they're gonna gain confidence. There's always a trail of bait going in, which is the most important thing. If you fed, say once every five minutes, then pellets are gonna be on the bottom. There's no trail which will draw the fish and bring the fish into your peg. So again, amounts wise as well, I tend to go, when I'm fishing four mils, maybe 20 pellets at a time, because you can feed more because they're smaller. Six mils, probably like five or 10 pellets, but all, all the time it's little and often feeding. And you'll see the best anglers to catch more because they'll be feeding often, working that rig and try and find where them fish are. So the busier you are, the more you'll catch. The perseverance when it comes to shallow fishing is so important. Now, basically the fish are not going to come shallow to you straight away. It can even be sometimes the last hour or half an hour in your session. But by persevering with it, it'll eventually hopefully come. Now, you'll see a lot of people, they'll say, fish shallow for 20 minutes, half an hour, then they give up. Now, this is no good. To get them fish shallow, you've got to constantly be putting pellets into them peg and bringing them fish in your swim. So by just feeding little and often, it's going to leave a trail all the time, which is hopefully going to bring them fish into your peg. But like I say, like you see a lot of the time, people just give up on it and they can't do that. Like today, in today's case, we started mugging while the fish weren't really hungry, but constantly we were just rattling a few pellets with the catapult in that area. And by sort of a couple of hours in, it's gone absolutely solid. And we've been able to pick fish around that area, whereas the muggers have actually gone because they've decided to have a chew and we've caught on that line. So perseverance is massive. Keep feeding that bait, keep at it, keep working around and eventually you'll catch some.